Hey, I'm David and today we're checking Midsommar, a 2019 horror movie by Ari Aster who also directed Hereditary. This one, just like his previous work, is not for everyone, so you probably won't watch this video before the movie. This film focuses on Danny and some big problems she faces in her life. She needs someone to support her, tell her everything is gonna be alright and just be there. Will her boyfriend do that? No. <laughs> That's why we're counting how many times we wanted to say F you, Christian, in this movie. Let's jump right in. We actually begin this movie with some spoilers. This painting basically shows everything that will happen in the movie, and that'll be common, so get used to it. We should move anyway, I don't want you to have that much information. Her main protagonist is this woman, Danny, who's calling her parents, because she received a worrisome email from her sister Terry. Terry's bipolar, but like extreme. So we understand she sometimes writes Danny alarming messages like this one. Man, I would have pissed off my pants and drove my car all the way to my parents' home. And even though this is a sensible topic, I have to say, <laughs> the most disturbing of all is that they are using email to talk to each other. <laughs> Obviously, we need a therapist here. Danny calls her boyfriend Christian for some emotional support, which is very understandable. And in this conversation, we get our first F you, Christian. It's still just another obvious ploy for attention. Mm. What does that even mean, man? That's some scary shit, you know? It's not like calling for attention, wake up! Immediately right after, Danny calls a friend and we realize she's a bit worried about her relationship with Christian, as she feels her problems are overwhelming him. Meanwhile, Christian is in a pizzeria with his friends, thinking about breaking up with Danny when he receives another call from her, just to find out this wasn't a call for attention at all. Terry actually killed her parents and suicide with exhaust gas. Yeah, that's how this movie begins. Danny is obviously depressed. Honestly, I would, I would feel myself torn apart. Thankfully, Christian is super helpful. I was just gonna go to that party for 45 minutes. Mm. Oh, sweet lord, how, how's that even a human being? Danny goes with him to at least get herself distracted or, or something, but there she finds out Christian and the rest are going to Sweden. What does Christian have to say about this? I mean, we were talking about it. We were thinking about it. Going back to her apartment, Danny's like... It was just really weird. What was? Well, I just apologize, Danny. You didn't apologize, you said sorry. This guy is a douchebag. Next day, all the boys get together and Christian tells his friends he invited Danny to go to Sweden too. Mark, this guy right here, is like over my dead body. But Christian says Danny is unlikely to go, as she still feels depressed. Sorry for smashing your dreams, Mark, because when Danny gets to the apartment, she says she's good to go. Josh isn't happy about that either, but Pele, this Swedish young man, is pleased with the idea. Pele explains he invited everyone to his commune in the middle of nowhere. After a quick flight, they get to a field and wow, that's a beautiful place to be in. There we meet Pele's brother, who also brought some friends from England. All of them will take some mushrooms to, you know, have a trip together. Whoa, that thing makes you see some weird crap. But not everything is fun, as Danny starts feeling a bit uneasy, breathing fast and running to a toilet, seeing her dead sister there for a second. She wakes up later, well, the next day. It's, it's confusing, as it doesn't really get dark for a long time, so all day is... is day. You know. They get to the commune, which could be very well confused with heaven, everything is so nice there. An elder explains this year the festival is special, being celebrated that way only every 90 years. A redhead girl makes some suggestive eye and foot contact with Christian and he's like, I'm going after her. Well, you know what they say, move your feet, lose your seat. And Pele uses the opportunity to give Danny a gift as it's her birthday. 
Later, the British couple ask Danny and Christian how long they've been together. Just over three and a half years. Four years. Here we get more spoilers in a series of paintings, which I can't entirely show you, cause we would get demonetized and banned from YouTube. All young people sleep in this kind of barn, so no privacy. Whoa, that's hard. We also get some important information. Bell explains the community sees life as seasons, changing seasons every 18 years. So spring from 0 to 18, summer from 18 to 36, fall from 36 to 54, and winter from 54 to 72. What happens later? Do you retire? Do you move from the place? Do you jump from a cliff to die? We have no idea. In that moment, Bella reminds Christian about Danny's birthday. Look at this man trying to light a candle. He's not even able to do that right. And once again, we get another painting spoiling the movie. Next day, everyone sits on a big table outside to have a special breakfast. Two elders preside over the ceremony, making interesting sounds. Everyone leaves the table and follows the two members to a cliff. And you know what's coming. The old woman gets near the edge, makes a few gestures and jumps. Holy guacamole! For sure, we can show more of this, it's freaking brutal. The two Brits start arguing and yelling, especially when they see the old man will jump too. I can't show you that, but the old man doesn't die when he falls. So everyone starts groaning and two more members kill him. Another one tries to explain the reason for all that. It's a different conception of life, seeing it as a cycle. Believing those who die will be part of the new life about to begin. But all that gruesome scene is not enough to stop Christian from being an a-hole. I've decided I'm gonna do it here on Horga. Saying he'll do his thesis about that community, kind of stealing the topic from Josh, this other friend whose plan was always exactly that. Danny is ready to get out of the place, but Pelle persuades her to stay, saying he also lost his parents, but the commune helped him to find his way and never felt alone. Pelle asks Danny about Christian. Danny, do you feel held by him? That, 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 that's exactly what I'm talking about. At night, when everyone is sleeping, the redhead girl hides something under Christian's bed, probably to make him fall in love or something. I personally think George Michael is better for this kind of thing, but it's a free world, I guess. The villagers gather the ashes of the deceased and put them near this old tree. Mark takes a leak near the freaking same tree. Why? Aren't there bathrooms? But when he's told about the importance of the place, he doesn't even care and I think we all know he's a dead man from now on. Meanwhile, this British girl is about to leave the place with her boyfriend when she's informed her couple just left. Whoa, they, they know how to lie, I mean, everybody would believe that. Then he tells that to Christian, but he's like... On the, on the subject of couples, actually... Um... <clears throat> I'm starting to think he didn't develop like basic human feelings or, or brain. Anyway, nobody seems to be worried about this strange happening, so I, I guess we won't either. In that moment, we also learn about the religion of the place. Through inbreeding, the community gets someone to provide knowledge, like this boy right here. Me and you just see something a two years old would do, but they have more Bibles than my grandma, so... During lunch, Christian gets a more reddish beverage. I wonder what that could be. I mean, it, it, it's obviously blood, I mean, super obvious. He also gets some pubes in his pie. Ew. A girl gets Mark and, and, and he's dead, he was already dead, no surprise there. That night, Josh sneaks into the temple to take some pics of the holy book, but he's surprised and killed, and we also see someone wearing Mark's face? This all just turned really twisted, and it will continue that way, honestly. 
In the morning, the community says someone stole one of the holy books, finding out that disappearing of Josh and Mark, Christian tries to help. And if he did take that book, I just pray you understand, we don't associate as friends of his or collaborators or anything. Or not. Danny joins a dance competition. Whoever dances the most will become the queen of Midsummer. At the same time, Christian is told by one of the elders that the union between the redhead girl and him has been accepted. By that point, I think he doesn't even know what to think or say, so no Fs here. He's given a drink with some special properties. Danny wins the competition, becoming this year's May Queen. Everybody's happy. Well, well, except Christian. He's. he's. he's there. Whoa, Pele, hold your horses, man. They get food. Uh, I, I don't even know what time it is. This could be breakfast, dinner, or a midnight snack. And Christian is definitely not feeling well. I feel sick just from singing. The May Queen will bless the crops, and I don't know about you, but that carriage looks amazing. Christian is sent to a cabin where some people are waiting for him. Two men to help him get ready before the action. And a lot of nude women inside with the redhead girl. Sorry, another scene we can show because we would be totally banned from YouTube. I still remember people leaving the movie theater during this scene, seriously. It's uh, a little bit... yeah. Sadly, Dan is back before the thing finishes and sees the whole thing through the keyhole. She's devastated and whoa, what a terrific actor. But now she's part of the family. She's not alone, as she's felt before her whole life. And the rest of the girls feel her pain too. When Christian is done with the job, he runs away from the place, getting inside a hen house, finding one of the Brits. And, and I don't even know what to say about this scene, because honestly, it's... Uh, a bit too explicit to show it, so sorry. But this one actually reminded me of Hannibal a lot. Not the movies, because that weren't that much. But the TV series, uh, yeah, probably, probably I shouldn't have seen that one, yeah. Christian gets captured and sedated. In that moment, we understand everything. The festival needs nine human sacrifices, four outsiders and four from the community. Hmm, but last time I learned advanced calculus, that was eight. Exactly, now it's the job of the May Queen to decide who the last sacrifice will be. This guy we don't even know, or Christian. I do want to know who you would choose and why, so leave a comment below. Anyway, Danny chooses Christian. Everything is set up, some people stop with hay, some alive and Christian in a bird suit. They are all set on fire while the rest watch from the distance. When the alive ones start screaming, everybody does too, and Danny, her soul is, is ripping apart. But it's in this moment that she realizes she's found the only thing she ever wanted, a real family. Look at her, so happy. It's impossible not to smile with her. Yep, that's the end of the movie. So what's, what's the meaning of all that? Well, the director has said it's basically Danny breaking up with Christian, moving on and finding some support in a different place. Christian burning alive is basically a representation of you burning some pictures of your ex. That's that's interesting. Uh, maybe not the best way to actually break up with your couple though. Well, let's see the count. So that's it, I hope you liked it. Don't forget to help this channel grow by liking this video and subscribing. I'm David, have a nice day and see you soon!